Welcome everybody to part 10 of my Unity VR guide. Today, we'll be learning how to make buttons. We'll cover how to make a button out of basic components, how to make a button springy with configurable joints, how to use triggers to detect when our buttons have been pressed, and how to connect our buttons to different events like opening a door. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and going to the right scene, which is gonna be this part 10 buttons, we are going to be greeted with this. We have a new door, doesn't have a handle though. Instead, we're gonna make it a sliding door for when we press the button and we have our pink table. Uh, outside of that, I have also changed our hands a little bit. They have everything that they used to have, but I've also added some little colliders to the thumbs, fingers, and palm. It's not perfect, but you know what? It works pretty well. And we're going to need those colliders for when we push our button. With that, let's make a button. So I'm going to go ahead and create a empty game object. I'm gonna name it button. Then I'm going to create a, oh, well, I should zero this out really quick. And then I'm going to create a 3D object cube and enter some items in here really quick. Okay, and with that, I'll tell you what I've done. So I named this new cube that I made, frame, and then we set the scale to 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and finally, let's see, oh yeah, I added a material. Now, the material's not too important, but if you like to make things a little pretty like I do, I just found this in world mats, material, and then iron. And what this is gonna serve as is the base for our button. And because it's our base, we're gonna get rid of the box collider because on top of it, we're gonna have a push button that needs to move up and down. And if it's colliding with this thing, well, it's not gonna work too well. So that's removed. And speaking of the push button, well, I'm gonna make that right now. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna create another 3D cube. I'm going to name it push button. And let me zoom through this really quick. All right, let's go over what I've done with the push button. So starting off with the position, uh, I've put it at 0 0.055 on the Y axis, so it's bumped up a little bit. And then for scale, I did 0 0.14, 0 0.05, and 0.14. And one last thing I need to add is going to be the trigger. So again, I'm just gonna right click and I am going to create a 3D cube and enter some values in. All right, and that is going to set us up for our trigger is what I've called it. And it's gonna have a negative 0.01 for positioning on the Y axis, then 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0.1 for scale. And finally, this is going to be a trigger eventually when the push button comes down on it. And so I'm gonna go ahead in the box collider, set this to is trigger, do not forget that. Otherwise, we're gonna be pretty sad later. Now that we have all the components for the button, I'm gonna go ahead and move this into a position up on the table because I don't wanna bend down all the way and press it on the ground, let's see. Yeah, that looks just about right to me, perfect. And if we start up the scene now, we can't do anything because, well, we haven't made the push button a push button yet. So let's fix that. So we're gonna go ahead and select our push button, then we're gonna add component and we are gonna add a configurable joint. Now we could use a spring joint here, but honestly, I'm just a little more comfortable with the configurable joint at this time. So I'm just gonna go with that. Uh, and you'll see that it has a rigid body that it adds to it. And it is a button and we want it to move, but we don't want it to use gravity at this moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And let's mess with the configurable joint really quick. I'm gonna enter in some values and I'll explain them in a moment. All right, and so, what I've done here is kind of like in the doors and drawers video, I have locked the X motion, I have locked the Z and all the angular motion. We don't want it to rotate, nor do we want it to move left or right. We just want it to go up and down on the Y axis. So I've set that to limited and then I've put it down to a very small amount that I want it to move. So 0 0.01, it can move down or up 0 0.01. And finally on the Y drive, I have a position spring of 75 and a position damper of 10. So what this is gonna do is gonna make it very springy. It's gonna push back a lot and you can play with this value and see what feels right to you. And the damper is gonna be how quickly it stops springing back and forth. So the higher that value is, the less it's gonna oscillate. 
And one last thing we need to add is a connected rigid body. This is gonna help it connect to this frame, but since this doesn't have a rigid body, I'm gonna go ahead and add one to the frame. And finally, we don't want it to use gravity. It is kinematic and that should be good there. So we'll come back to the push button, connected body and drag this frame there. Now, one nice thing that you can do when you're playing with this button to make sure things are hitting correctly now you'll see that it's starting off and it's not making contact and we can also press play and we can play with the button and see if we push down if it is going to make contact with here and it'll spring back like we expect and we don't even have to use the vr headset which can save us a lot of development time but to double check i'm going to start up the scene and see what we have and i can push the button but it's not detecting my collisions all the time with the button it's dipping below further than I'd like, and also it seems to be rotating a bit. So let's fix that. So first I'm gonna start off by fixing the collisions and I'm gonna change the collision detection to continuous dynamic, and that should take care of that. Next, that rotation was weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and freeze all rotation here. Now starting up the scene, you can see that it is detecting the collision better. It's still dipping below further than I'd like, but you know what? For this use case, I think it's okay. Coming back to the editor, we have a pushable button, but it's not setting anything off, and that's where the trigger comes in. So we're gonna come over here, and I've actually written a script called VR button, and I'm gonna go over it really quickly. Opening up the script, let's run through this really quickly. First, we have dead time, and this is going to be the time that the button is going to be inactive after it releases. Then we have a bool, so dead time is active, so this is going to be what deactivates it. And then we have two Unity events on pressed and on release, and these we can use to connect other scripts or actions to outside of the script inside the editor, and I'll show you that a little later. And First, we have a on trigger enter, and what this is going to do, it's going to check if the collider, the other, is going to have a tag called button, and it's going to make sure if dead time is not active, then it will invoke on pressed, and it'll give us a little debug message. And then on trigger, trigger exit, it's going to do a similar thing, but instead it is also going to start a coroutine called wait for dead time. And as you can imagine, what that's going to do is it's going to come in here. It is going to set that bull to true, and then it's going to wait for the seconds of the dead time. And finally, once that's done, it will then set the bull to false. So reactivating the button. And that's it. Coming back to the editor, you'll remember that we had two functions on trigger enter and on trigger exit that checked for a tag called button. And our push button doesn't have that yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this, go to tag, and I've already left the tag here. So we just click that. And so now if we press play and we push down the push button, you'll see that in the console, it'll say I've been pressed. And then since I released it, it will release. And there you go. All right, and there we go. We have a functioning button. It will send a signal when we push in and also when it's released. And you know what? Let's hook it up to a few more things just to make sure it's functioning completely. So what I'm going to do here is we have this sliding door and I've already left this script here and it will open the door if it is closed or it will close the door if it's open. I'm not going to go over the script here, but I will leave comments in the script if you want to see how that works. And what we can do is go into trigger and I'm going to have it when it's pressed. But again, you can also do it on released. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how you want these things to function. And I'm going to drag this into here and then I'm going to go to sliding door and you'll see this toggle door open is the public function that I've made. And so now if we press play, you'll see that if I push the button, it opens. And if I push it again, it closes. Go figure. And you know what? For one last thing, let's add something else. Let's add some audio to this button. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to add an audio source. I'm going to turn off play on awake and also set the spatial blend to 3D. And then I'm going to come up here to our assets, go under audio and I have a button click sound. And then I'm going to come back up here on pressed under VR button. I'm going to add again and I am going to drag this here and come over here and press play. So this is gonna play anytime we click. Oop, and it looks like for some reason this got disconnected. There we go. And so now when I press play, everything should work and it should make a button sound. 
And there you have it. When we press the button, the door will open, a sound is playing, and we're pretty set. If you found this video helpful, I would appreciate a like. It helps me reach other people and grow the channel. Thank you so much. You take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.